Liberal city spending millions to fight the homeless crisis, but the problem, it just keeps getting worse. There's heartbreaking images of those living in deplorable conditions on the streets becoming all too common. As Democrat leaders get accused of dumping billions of taxpayer dollars into failed programs that do little to solve the issue, we ran through the numbers and the amounts spent are just staggering. Look at this. San Francisco spends an astonishing $100,000 per homeless person. New York shells out $58,000 per year per homeless person, but it hasn't helped. A recent report says homelessness in the Big Apple has reached the highest level since the Great Depression, mm. and Chicago spends about $9,000 per homeless person. The unmanageable homelessness problem in the Windy City putting McDonald's CEO in a tough spot. They've been trying to entice employees back to headquarters in Chicago and called on city and business leaders to address problems that have arisen since the pandemic. Everywhere I go, I'm confronted by the same question these days. What's going on in Chicago? There is a general sense out there that our city is in crisis. The truth is, it's more difficult today for me to convince a promising McDonald's executive to relocate to Chicago from one of our other offices than it was just a few years ago. Judge, we could talk about any American city, but you know Chicago very well. And what he's saying, you think that's happening for other businesses as well? Absolutely. And I give him credit. I absolutely give the CEO of McDonald's credit for actually making an issue of this. Look, the big cities are in crisis, but not just the cities and the people who live there, but businesses are now recognizing the impact that crime has on their bottom line. And that's why if you don't have law and order, then you then what you have is anarchy and then you have businesses that aren't going to be able to survive. This homelessness, in addition to the, the look that's unsavory, I mean, I know people that we send to jail for less than $106,000, which is what they wow. pay in San Francisco. So, I mean, the yeah. issue is what are we going to do with these people? Some of them are criminals, there's no question about it, who have mental health illness at the, at the, at the genesis of whatever uh, criminal, crime they're involved in, but everything's in crisis. It's violent crime. It's drug abuse. It's it's the overall depression. And we, we've gone back as a nation a good three or four decades in terms of inflation and crime and now this homelessness, which just is like the, the topping on the cake. And it's a sad situation. And there's nothing else that we can do except make sure that people who run these cities understand that it's not just about safety anymore. It's about everything that spins off of law and order. Did the numbers surprise you? They surprised me, Greg, like how much money is spent per person. Because if you walk around the streets of New York, San Francisco, Denver's got a huge problem. San, even San Diego, Los Angeles, like they're, they're spending all this money, but it's not working. Yeah, the, uh, I, I'm not surprised. Liberals love throwing money at problems because it's not their money. It's our money. And they get to parade themselves based on this phony compassion that they're doing something. 800 and some odd million dollars went to this Thrive program in New York. We never mm -hmm. saw it again. I don't think the conversation about homelessness actually exists because you have to speak these unspeakable truths. But that means you have to be risked. You have to risk being called uncompassionate heartless and cold, but you have to, you, the unspeakable truth are this. A majority of law-abiding citizens are at the mercy of a few thousand, 10,000, 50,000, maybe a half a million nationwide of people who exist independent of our rules, laws, and manners, right? We have defined a heinous lifestyle, homelessness, as a lifestyle choice, right? We, I, and I'm saying exempt from like the, the, the tiny exceptions, right? I'm talking largely men, when you see these pictures, they're mostly men. They're not hanging out like the, the, the jovial transients and hobos that you used to see in cartoons. These are strung out, manic, unfriendly, aggressive people. And you're lucky if they're unconscious because then they won't hurt you. Right. I walk this city all the time. I drive up in the morning. I count them. I recognize them. I know them. They prefer the shelter, they don't prefer shelters to the streets because you can't do drugs and score drugs in shelters. That's why they're out there. That's a choice, right? You can't bring your property into the shelter either because that because they don't allow that. So you prefer to be outside with your bags of stuff and do your drugs. All you got to do is spend one afternoon in New York City and you see the reality and it flies in the face of everybody there that tells you you have to be more compassionate because their compassion is allowing this to happen, throwing money at that. They're like the tourists that give that, that the healthy beggar with the little dog money and that beggar is in front of your house.
And it's like, I want to go to your damn house where you are in Germany or Spain and do the same thing and see how you feel because all you do is you keep these people here making money. I do have a solution, oh, okay. and it's a progressive solution. Give the homeless what they want because there is no way you can have a conversation with them. You can't, have a, you can't reason with the unreasonable. Give them what they want, but not in the city. The city allows this to happen. Move it out onto government property and let them run it. Camp. Camp away. Give them the autonomy to truly run their lives into the ground. Harm each other. Don't harm us anymore. That's, what, that's the only thing you can do because it can't get any worse than it is now. you got to move them to a place where they can live their lives. So federally funded opium dens where the homeless can and kill I each other. And I volunteer as mayor. <laughs> I will be mayor of Opium Town. Okay. Jesse, before I, I, I just wanted to point this out. Of yeah. course, you could talk about whatever you want. But in San Francisco, they distributed 262 tents. I love this. Across six locations. The tents were 16 point, a total of $16.1 million. That's about $61,000 per tent. You can get a regular tent. <laughs> For like 300, a good one for like 300 bucks. You can walk into REI and get a tent on sale for $300. But the city of San Francisco is charging $61,000 a tent to the taxpayers. That's crazy. The San Francisco officials also use taxpayer dollars to buy liquor and beer for the homeless people. Yep. And then they got caught. Look what they're doing in all of these non-for-profits. The profits are all going to the scam artists that run them. They take in $10 million to help the homeless. And what do they do with the money? This woman went on a shopping spree to Tiffany's, Ferragamo, Bergdorf Goodman. I know you're shaking your head. You've been there a few times, Judge. I mean, this is some of the nicest luxury shopping from anybody will ever do. And another guy stole about $5 million, and he does kickbacks to contractors and then gives his family members the run of the place. It's all a huge scam. They actually don't want to reduce homelessness. They want to keep the people on the streets so they can fleece the taxpayers. It's all a big grift. Why are there so many homeless people right now? Well, they emptied the prisons. They shut down the economy. They brought in all these illegal aliens, and they've decriminalized drugs. So what do you expect to happen? I understand Greg's point. I'd like to speak directly to the homeless people right now. Take some money. Go get a hour in a hotel. Take a shower. Do a shave. Then go to the barber shop. Have a get a little haircut. Then go to a thrift shop. Buy new clothes. Get a bus ticket and get the hell out of the city and away from all these drugs. Then get yourself a job. Go to sleep. Read a book. <laughs> take a walk. Do some push-ups. Drink some water. Save a little money from each paycheck and then call your parents. <laughs> okay, Because your parents will come take you in. None of okay, that will mom. ever happen. Ever. Ever. That's ever. great advice. Ever. 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 I do think that Geraldo, people it just feel you, you can be a compassionate person and also feel completely helpless as you walk around. Yeah, because the bitter irony, Dana, is that the more services you provide, the more homeless people there'll be. Plus, yeah. who doesn't want to live in San Francisco or Venice Beach? Mm -hmm. You know, I remember during Ed Koch's administration, they used to give out bus tickets. Where do you want to go? Any place but here. And uh, Jesse's idea is not... That outrageous, the whole notion, and it goes with Greg's idea of not in the city. Any place you want to go, we'll give you place, a, a way to get there, not unlike uh, Texas and, uh, and Florida are doing right now. Uh, but I think the idea of, uh, of some kind of encampment, some kind of idyllic uh, place someplace, but you have to have some payback. You have to have some responsibility. For instance... My big beef with progressives is they demand nothing of the recipient. Why not sobriety? Why not drug abuse counseling? Why not getting yourself cleaned up? You know, you can't have anyone evolving out of that sorry condition unless you give them some responsibility. Well, but they don't want that. I mean, when I used to sentence someone, I would say to them, to do, you, do, you want, do you want to go to jail for a year? Or do you want to go to rehab and straighten your life out? They'd rather jail. go to jail so they can come yeah. out and do what they do and do what they and like. The rehab is tough. And families pay, pay, several families, across, several thousands of families across the country, put their loved one in rehab mm. multiple times, drain their retirement savings, yeah. and still end up trying to, like, yeah, with sleepless nights, wondering where their children are. You know, what, what, what Harold is saying, though, is like, in the old days, they actually had the institutions were out in out of the city because the, the city is stressful for sane people. Mm. <laughs> Imagine being like loud. No, you're you're homeless. You're you you have a mental illness. You're drug addicted. Loud noises, buses, trains, everything. Why are you here? 
when you could actually be some this, there's a reason why people go to nature and that is a, that is something that c could be done but again you sound like you're speaking out of lack of compassion by saying move them out no we're saying that they they're not helping themselves they're destroying themselves and others if trump had bought greenland it would have been a perfect place <laughs> yes. to put them except it's not green though it's not no, no. greenland is ice <laughs> and iceland is green yes gotcha hey sean hannity here hey click here to subscribe to fox news youtube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis you will not get it anywhere else